Okay guys, so in the previous video, we created layout. We also did a couple of bootstrap implementation and also some sort of theming in order to get this primary color. We created this layout. So now it's time to go ahead and create these static pages. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this video now, inside my views, I'm going to create a new folder called auth. So whatever the pages that are going to deal with authentication, for example, login or the register that will go here and it will have a master layout on which all those components will be rendered. So let's go ahead and create that. So first one is login.view. The second one is the register.view. And since we have installed beta plugin, we can create a basic scaffolding of login components. So I'm going to give it a class of odd dash login. So this will be our component for our login. And let me quickly get rid of this styling. And that looks fine for us. And the same way, I'm going to quickly copy this part and going to paste it inside our register and I'll name it register. Route. And also we are going to create a master layout. So that will be with the name of index dot view. And again, I'm going to paste and this will be our authentication. Authentication. And this is our master layout. And within that, we are going to render our router view. So we'll later see how we can use this router view. And this is different router view than what we defined here. So this is a master router view. And this is the router view for the children component. So one of them is login and other one will be the register. So on that, we can render the router view again and we can specify that inside our router. So let's go ahead and design our router. So in the router, I'm going to create a new file called auth.js and this will be the file which will be handling all the routes related to the authentication stuff. So for example, login and the register, all that routes can be registered here. And this is the better approach in order to follow modular approach so that your main router component doesn't get bulky and the code splitting in it will work just fine. And now let's see how we can do that inside our auth.js. So as you can see inside the router, it is nothing but just an array which has some properties. So now we can also say that this auth also can be an array. So let's see, it will export default an object and then we'll specify the path. So our path will be our auth then it will render also the component. So let me bring in that component auth layout or let me make it auth view. That will be a better name and we'll bring it from our source directory, which is pointed by adenate alias symbol that we saw in the previous video. And in the views, then we will go to the auth folder and we'll bring in our index.view file. And now we'll name this thing authentication and then it will have a component on which will be rendering. So component and that component will be our auth view component that we just brought in from our this views auth page and this index dot view. So this will be the master layout. And now it's time to render these components as a children route of this thing. So the way we can do that. It also takes a property called children and this children will be an array and within that it will again we can specify all the properties just like a normal route. So it will also have a path and now this time we won't specify with a slash. So we have a login. So it will be something like auth slash login and the name will be login component, I'm going to lazy load that component by the function. So I'm going to import that from our add direct, actually from the source, then the views slash auth. And then I'm going to look for this login.view component that we have. So we have login.view. 
and in the same way I'm gonna quickly copy and then after putting a comma I'm gonna again paste that actually let me see so comma and paste that and now we have two routes inside that so this will be going to the register component and we'll name it a register and this will again bring in our register component from the same auth slash that thing so now this is exporting our default object and now we can register that inside the main router so we'll bring in from auth router or actually we'll say auth routes and we'll bring in from the same directory and that will be our auth and now we can inject that inside the main routes object so we'll simply say auth routes and as i save it we will not find much of the difference but whole of the application is running fine without any sort of error so let's see how we can see that in the action so for now i'm just gonna give it a h3 of a text primary and let's name it this is a login component and in the same way copy save it in the register component let me get rid of this back text and this will be our register component and let's save it if i click on the login you will find that login is there if you click on the register you will find that register is also there so overall the component which is being rendered is auth component and on that component we have a two different sub routes that's called register and the login and then can they both can be accessed using this router links so this is very pretty straightforward now let's go ahead and set up the dashboard component so in views i'm going to create a new folder called dashboard and inside that i'm going to create a new file called index.view and we'll do our basic scaffolding for that so we'll simply say dashboard we'll give it a class of dashboard and within that we'll render again our router view so router view and we'll render the basic children components inside this dashboard component or with this element with the class of dashboard so inside that i'm going to create one with a profile dot view the other one will be the post dot view and now we can scaffold a basic view application here so we'll simply create a div with a class of dashboard dash profile profile and press tab and let's put it h3 with the class of text primary and here we'll say dashboard profile let me save that and quickly get rid of this for now later we'll add them according to our app needs and inside the profile actually this will be our profile this is fine in our post this will be our post so posts and this will render posts now we have to go and create our router inside that so we'll simply say dashboard dot js and let me quickly copy everything from inside just to save time from our, our js file and paste it inside this dashboard and this will become our dashboard view which will be coming from the dashboard and this will become again dashboard view and the suffix of the route will be dashboard and the name will be dashboard component so i'm gonna name it dashboard for now this will be our profile or let's make it post or let's make it my post so it will be more specific to uh, the user's post and name it my posts and from our auth let me quick it make them dashboard this will bring in our posts and this will bring in our profile and the name will be here my profile and we need to make this little bit modification in the navbar that we created in the previous video 
profile let's save it and now we'll again inject that thing bringing from inside our main router so routes from our dashboard and we'll inject that just below this routes or you can put it wherever you want so now this is our other two components that we have then we have auth routes and the dashboard routes so let's go and see them in the action but before that we need to go to the components layouts we need to do some modification with our nav links since we have named it to my profile and this will be going to the my post and let's save it let's go to the application and click on the profile you can see dashboard profile is there post dashboard post is there so we are no longer using the browser router we are using view router for the transition of the pages across the components so these are the separate separate components for the logout we'll deal with this thing separately but for now we'll leave it just like that so login register and everything is working and based on the authentication state of the user will protect these routes and now with that we have one more big trouble so if i go and get rid of this my post and just place the dashboard so what we'll see here we'll find nothing but then empty component and the same if i just go ahead and instead of this dashboard i write auth and for now it's gone to register so i'm going to get rid of register and again we'll find that empty component being rendered over there so by default we want the routers to redirect if nothing has been passed only the first part of the url has been passed so we can do that inside our auth we'll give it redirect property redirect and we'll pass that auth slash in case of auth we want to redirect user to the login page and in the same way for the dashboard if nothing has been passed we want to redirect the user to slash dashboard slash post post route so now if i go ahead and instead of this login let me let it reload first and let me get rid of this login from the auth and just putting the auth it will automatically redirect me to the login component that we have so that's how we can protect our routes for now later we will be using based on the user authentication using some kind of router hooks and we'll protect these routes based on the user's authentication state so for now that's fine and with that all set we are able to set up our router and everything is working fine and also if you want to split this code also as a public route so anyone can access these pages so let me do that also so that our main router component looks nice and clean so inside my router i'm going to create a new file called public dot js so this is our public js and this will export default and array actually for now and now that array will be simply having these additional routes that we have so let me cut them from here and go to my public js and within this object i'm gonna do that and now we'll find this is quickly line saying that this home is not defined so now from my index i'm gonna cut this to and gonna bring in inside my public route so this is exporting default array and now we'll receive it inside our main router so let's bring it here public routes from our this public and this will be an array so we have to spread that public array values here so we can do that by saying this we can spread it and it will work just fine for our application so let's break it at the bottom and let's save it so whole application should work just fine as it was working before and let's reload that application so home is working about is working 
login is working, register is working, profile is working, and everything is working fine. So let's go ahead and now we'll fix this WebSocket call that is constantly being made from our Apollo client to the backend, which is on localhost 4000. So let's go ahead and configure this now. So let me quickly close everything. And let me shrink this router that we have, even the views. And now we are going to work with this viewapollo.js file. So this has a HTTP endpoint and it is pointing to our Apollo localhost GraphQL, which is already running on port 4000 slash GraphQL. So this will make all the API calls or basically GraphQL API call to this with our query as well as mutations from our Apollo client to this endpoint. Now let's first fix this WebSocket thing. Since we are not using any kind of subscription inside our application, so I'm gonna quickly comment this line first. And instead of that, we can pass that from the comments. You can read that, you can use that null as a property. So if you don't wanna use that subscription, and let's save it. And as I do this, inside my application, it will reload and we no longer find that error. So that is not making any kind of WebSocket call to the backend. So we fixed first thing. Now one more thing is, as you can see, this is exporting a function called create provider and in which we are using this Apollo client. So this is a default way to do that. And this function has been export it from here to our main.js file, create provider, and we brought in from view Apollo file that is, that is here. And then it was injected inside this view instance as a function as an Apollo provider. So now within anywhere inside a whole application, we have the access to this Apollo client and in every template we can use that. But for our view access state, we still need to do a lot of things. So let's do that here. And now here, let me quickly bring something from from Apollo link context. And then it will be set context method. And we don't have to install this separately because once we were installing with our Apollo client, we were adding to our project, it will automatically has imported all the necessary dependencies already installed with that Apollo command. So now I'm gonna create a new function just below this HTTP endpoint where it has been defined. So we can do that by simply saying const auth link and I'll explain what is happening. So we'll be using set context. I don't know why I'm writing content, but that's fine for now. And this will take a function. So it will be an asynchronous function and the first parameter, and then we'll extract the headers. And then it will be an arrow function. And we'll be simply saying const token equal to local storage dot get item and we'll get our token so uh, we'll be storing our token from apollo token and then we'll be returning our default headers that we already had and then with the key of authorization so remember in the previous video series, we were accepting our token in the authorization key of the headers. So we'll pass that token here. So let me copy that token. And if that token is there, then pass that token. Otherwise just send as an empty link. Now we still find this is quickly line saying this is declared, but it is, its value is never used. So we have to simply copy this part. And here you'll find this link. Let me quickly uncomment that and paste my auth link. So this is our custom function, which will set the headers to every GraphQL request, which will be made 
before beforehand so it is a kind of acting like a interceptor function for the request object so whatever the request we are making from our client to the server before making that request it will just append the headers with the default headers that we have and then we'll set our token if we have one so we'll look into how we can store this token later once we authenticate our user from the front end but that would do the job for now so let me quickly shrink and now we want to export our apollo client from here so inside this create provider function let me quickly copy this part and we'll export this thing so we'll simply say export const from our actually let me quickly put that like this and we'll export these values so and now we are not seeing our options for now and whatever the default options that object is there so let me quickly clear everything that we have here all the comments since we no longer need them enable automatic this part control x that's fine that's okay for now with our application i think this should do the job so we are passing this default option inside this create apollo client function and this will export our web socket method as well as our apollo client and since we have passed null to our web socket endpoint then this part also will be null so we no longer need to export that outside from here and now later in any part of our vuex store while managing our state or making any kind of mutation from the vuex state we can just bring in this apollo client and then we'll pass our query and with variables it will do the job for us so that's how we will set our apollo client and now we are going to simply finish it up our with the login forms as well as the register form so that we can start working with the authentication in the next video so in my login instead of this part let me quickly get rid of this part and we'll simply say dot row and within that row i'm gonna give it a call div with a call of md12 uh, actually md6 and then the call of sm12 so on the small size screen we have this and within this call i'm gonna give it a card then within that card i will be having dot card header and then within that header i want h3 with a class of text primary and font weight bold and press tab you'll find this has been created and we'll call it login so let's see how it looks in the ui you'll find this login is there but it is on the left hand side so let's make it mx auto so it will push it into the center and now this is our login thing and also inside this thing i'm also gonna give it a card with the body and then within the body i want to create a form and that form i want to get rid of this action and on the submit will prevent the default action of the form of submission and now let's go ahead within that form we are going to create div with the form control form group so these are nothing but but the basic bootstrap classes form group and within that form group we have a label and that label will be the oh, actually let me say l a b l e e with a text primary and with a text actually font weight bold font size sm and also we'll give the id of username and press tab you'll find everything is working so now this id part is not required wasn't required and our username will be inside our this part so that's that's my bad and we have a username so let's save it 
and see we have that username over here. So now inside this form group, I'm also gonna create a new input element. So input with the form control and also with the ID of username. So the, here we'll be using the ID of username, press tab and also give it a class of, actually we have already defined our class. We need to give a placeholder called username. Let's save it. And here we have our username. And now you can also see, see this with the help of this theming thing. Our outline focus is also now change uh, overriding the default properties or bootstrap. So everywhere, wherever we have the primary color, it will, this color will come into that effect. So let me quickly copy this part, paste it, and this will become our password field. Label for password. This will be our text type of password, input type of password. Placeholder will be the password. Form control, that's fine. And ID will be the password again. So if I save it, we have another input with a password field. And all the labels are connected properly with the form inputs. So after this, form group. And within that form group, I'm also gonna create a BTN button. Actually, BTN will give it a class of BTN dot prime, BTN dash primary, BTN block, and press tab, and we have a button, and we call it login. So let's save it. We have this login button, and this is not working fine. So we also give the class of BTN again. Now this is our login button. So I think this looks nice and clean. And also I'm gonna give just below this a router link to our register page. So instead of this button, we call it router link. And we'll give, give it as a class of, let's not give it any kind of class. It will directly go to our auth slash register and we'll put our message need an account register now let's save it and see how it looks so we have this register now and if i click it it will take you to the register route so in the similar fashion i'm going to quickly copy everything from here this is our basic template and we are going to put it inside this thing this will become auth register and the, this will become register username is fine it is also taking our registration is also taking first name so i'm gonna do that first name so this is just a very standard markup that we have And this is fine. I think this should do the job for our first name field. Then we have a last name. And let's save it. So if I click on the register now, we have our first name, last name, username, password and we are missing out with our use email field so just below this username i'm gonna copy that i'm gonna paste it again and this will become our email and here inside our username this will become email id will be email and type of text will also become the email so that's fine we have our email username, last name, first name, and everything is working. And instead of this login text, it will become register. And this login now, this register now will become login now. And the message will change already have an account and that's fine. Login now. So this will go to the login and currently we are just going to the register. So the route will also change 
in that manner. So login, register, login, register. So now this is working fine. And now we need to connect with our bind with our values and the models. So for binding with a value or the piece of the state of the component, we have data and this data should be a function and this should return an object. And within that, we can define the piece of the state. So let's say we have a username. Actually, let's make it user. This will having username, which will be empty by default. And also we have our password field on. So we have this. And I don't like to write like this way. So we can do that. We can do the same thing just like by this. And we can get rid of this return statement that we have here. And now this will work just fine. And now we need to bind these input fields actually. Yeah, that's fine for now. Uh, let me quickly copy this part. I thought this was a login component. So that's fine. Paste it. And now we need to bind this user field, the username with this models or with this input element. So let me do that. And the way we can do that by simply saying we model user dot username. This will become our v dash model user dot password field. So let's save it and that should do the job for us. In the same way, here we have email password first name last name so this are the piece of the state that we are going to deal with and password is already duplicated so we can get rid of one and let me organize my code and it is fine and now we need to bind that thing here so with our input with the form first name v dash model equal to user dot first name we binded that let me copy this quickly paste it just above this part and this will become last name this will become our username field so we are binding our user dot username with this part and let me do that too this will become to our email and our password actually password so i made a mistake that was a small typo let's save it and now these input fields are connected with that and now we no longer find any kind of error inside our application and everything is working fine. So now let's connect with this login buttons and to trigger some event. So inside our login, we'll create a methods property inside this export default script. So methods and authenticate user and we for now console log statement so console log user and we can access this user by using this because this means this whole component and within that we have a piece of state called user so this dot user and let me quickly copy this part and in the prevent default function first of all we need to bind this form so on the submit method, this will call prevent default of action of the form submission. And then it will call this authenticate user function. And let me quickly copy this methods now. We'll go to our register and here we'll paste that. And this time we'll simply say sign up user. So now this will be the function that will be called once this form is submitted. So on the prevent default, we'll call this function and let's go ahead in action and see what happens now. So let me quickly fill 
these properties with the dummy values and let's put it one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and register we have the user object we have the email password and everything is here in the same way if i go ahead and put my password something like that i think there's a typo so password and this will become password field and if i click here login we'll find our username as well as the password everything is there so with that all set we are able to create our login as well as the register and in the next video we'll make our first graphql api call in order to register the user as well as the authenticate the user so stay tuned with my channel if you like the content hit subscribe and comment and share and i re i'm really thankful for you guys that you appreciate my effort in order to create these type of content and i would really love making more on the react series and i prefer that's my per vue.js is my personal favorite so i thought of us creating on vue.js so thank you guys and we'll meet in the next video